Hello? Hey, Tony, you good? Hey, how you been? Uh, I'm just fine, I just got home. <laughs> I didn't know if it oh, was cool, too cool. late to call you or not. If you still wanted to do this, you still good for the interview? Yeah, sure, I'll do it. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Um, can you hear any background noise on my side at all? I've got a fan. I can hear you pretty good. Yeah, I can hear you. All right, yeah, let me just turn my thing up. So anyway, so uh, first of all, how you doing, man? I'm doing pretty good. How about you? I'm doing excellent. I've, uh, <laughs> this month on my channel has, uh, I didn't even plan for this, but it's been TSOL month, because I, you know, I uploaded Joe's interview, and then I talked to Tiny the other day, and now you, I've just been reviewing all the TSOL albums. <laughs> yeah, that's cool, dude. You talked to Tiny? Yeah, I talked to him, uh, the other day, uh, two days ago, it was. Yeah, I, uh, I, yeah. I went on Wikipedia to see, because... I knew you you started with the trigger complex, right? No, the the trigger complex was uh, actually Chip that played it. Oh, so you haven't played on the studio album yet? No, not the not the trigger complex. Uh, I've uh, I've only done uh, singles with them. Uh, I think like what four singles and uh, a live album. Wow, that's. I a... did uh, the live at the Zobitory, and that was with the. Uh, when we did the EP and uh, dance with me. So, uh, yeah, because I, I know Tiny, he started with Who's Screwing Who. I'm just trying to puzzle piece everyone together. But yeah, Tiny did the Who's Screwing Who, and then I think he ended after Life Liberty. And I know it was 20, 2005 to 2015, so whichever albums were in between those time periods. Yeah, that was um, right after Tiny, it was, uh, it was Chip. They came in, uh, and then he did the, the trigger complex with them. And then I, I think he might have been in a band for like about a year, and then he took off. And then uh, and then I started playing for them. So that how, was about three how, years ago. How did you become a part of TSOL? Well, um, I auditioned for them. Um, you want to hear the story? Hell yes, <laughs> I do. Of course. I know there's a couple of different stories that Jack uh, tells people, but uh, I can tell you the real story. Um <laughs> Well, um, I used to be a mailman, right? A and, mailman? Uh, yes, I was a mailman in uh, Los Angeles. And um, for a while, you know, I was working there. Uh, I might have been there three years uh, before I left. But um, I used to go up in the hills. Uh, it's a, a little area called Montecito Heights. And uh, I, I, I remember I was delivering at this house. Uh, uh, for a while, you know, I had the route for a while, uh, so I was delivered to that to this one big pad that was up there. And um, uh, one day they had um, a parcel, a package, and it didn't fit in the mailbox, so I decided to walk into the to the the front door. You know, I wasn't gonna leave it out so someone could come by and take it. Yeah. So I walked it up to the front door, and then um, as I was getting to the front door, they had a the living room window was huge, you know. It was the big ass house, big ass window, and um, Jack always tells everyone I was looking inside the window, but I wasn't. <laughs> but um, you could actually see through the window from where, from you know, when you're walking down the the, the little walkway on the side. And um, I saw a huge, uh, I think it was like a, a vinyl or or something on the wall, and it said TSL. And I was like, holy fuck, you know, it's. it's who is it? Is it the manager of TSO or one of the members? I wasn't sure, you know. So I looked at the package and I said, Mike Roach, and I was like, oh, fuck. That's <laughs> so I was delivering mail to Mike Roach the whole time and not knowing. Oh, I never really God. saw him outside or anything like that. Um, but, um, you know, I started following more uh, TSO on, on Facebook after that. Uh, I, I mean, I grew up listening to TSO, so I, I already knew who they were. Um, so after like a couple of years of just following them and following everyone in the band, um, there was a time when um, I think I, I found out Tiny was was leaving the band, and uh, I right away I, I messaged uh, Mike on uh, Facebook, and then he wrote back, and then I was like, "Hey, I'm interested in trying out. You know, uh, I know your music. I I grew up listening to it. You know, give me a shot." Usually they get people that they know or a friend of a friend, you know. It's never, yeah. it's never a person they don't know, you know. It's it's very difficult to to get a gig like that. So uh, you know, I give it a shot. Um, Jack, I mean, uh, Mike wrote back, uh, back, 
and uh, he's uh, you know what, give me. I was, you know, I'll put your name in the in the hat, and then we pull it out, and we'll we'll give you a try, you know. And I never got that chance, so they ended up uh, they ended up fighting someone else, you know. They ended up getting a chip. Uh, so you know, I I, I uh, you know I was bummed out, whatever. I really wanted to play for them. Um, so uh, maybe about a year, year and a half later, two years, I think. I don't know around that time. Um, I think uh, I found out that Chip was leaving uh, because Jack posted something on Facebook saying something about um, it's hard to find uh, drummers that could tour or something like that. I can't remember what it was. So um, I messaged Jack and he wrote back. Uh, he didn't really sound too interested, huh? <laughs> yes. but uh, so I was like, so I remember I had talked to Mike before, and I was like, I'm just gonna write Mike, you know, because he's the one that I spoke to before about trying out about a year and a half ago. So I messaged him, and he kind of remembered me, and you know, he just, I guess they were auditioning drummers, and uh, no, no one was working out. Um, so um, I, you know, I, I messaged him and. He messaged me back. He's uh, you know, he, he was kind of being rude in the beginning, but because <laughs> I mean, I guess he was frustrated because he was trying out other drummers and and you know they were they were trying out drummers and no one was working out and they were frustrated, I guess, and and uh, because people would say like, yeah, we know the songs, you know, uh, the drummers would say like, yeah, I know the songs, and then when they show up, they wouldn't even be able to play fucking dance with me or something like that, you know. So he was like, he, he like. Cut the bullshit and just went straight to like asking me like shut up like are you good how long have you been playing Can you, you know uh, are you experienced like and this and that and I get it you know I was I, I didn't get offended or anything like that so you know I I um I told him yeah dude like, you know I've been playing for a little over twenty years you know I give them all my info whatever and then um, I was at work at the time I was uh, I was still working for the post office but but I wasn't a carrier. I was a supervisor, and I was a supervisor in Compton, California. In Compton, damn, that's hard. Yeah, and then. Um, I mean, I've never been there before, but you know. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty. It's not as bad as it used to be, but it's pretty brutal. So I was, uh, I was, I was working uh, when, uh, when I, when he messaged back, and he, uh, he's uh, can you show up in two hours at the studio, which is like thirty minutes from where I was at, and I was like, fuck, two hours, like. Okay, uh, I'm, I'm not gonna say no, you know. Yeah, so I was, like, I was like, "Yeah, fuck you! Yeah, I'll show up in two hours, dude." And I'm um, send me the songs you want me to go go, go over with, you know. He sent me the songs, you know, the shitload of songs. A lot of them were the, for, off the trigger topics, which at the time I never heard it, you know. Yeah. So trigger complex. Uh, when it came out in 2017, I I wanted to see you. I listened to that song a bunch, but I never, I didn't. Yeah, which I'll, I'll let you finish your story, then I'll talk about this because you might find it kind of funny. Yeah, yeah, it was, you know, I, and then I heard it, and you know, it was it's a it's a great album. I love it. Oh, I love uh, so, so um, you know, I had a few hours to learn to kind of like just listen to the songs and learn them in my head. I couldn't go home and practice and I was at work. Uh, so you know, I, I I listened to it as much as I can within those two hours, and then went to, straight to the studio. And I auditioned, and, and uh, right right after rehearsal, they uh, they told me I was on I was on for the for the tour they had set up, which was a warp tour. Hell yeah! And uh, and then so I, I you know I, I got the gig and I was very very excited. I was very happy. Um, oh, I would be too. I didn't tell anyone for two weeks because I was scared that they might they were gonna call me back the next day and be like, nah, forget it. We found someone else. So I didn't want to like jinx it, you know. Yeah, I so, get what you mean. Yeah, so but I mean, two weeks after, I started going all crazy and announcing it, telling my family, my friends, everybody was stoked. I'm in fucking the as well. <laughs> yeah, it was it was badass, man. It was you know, and so it's, it's, I've been playing with them ever since, and it's been uh, an honor playing with them, and you know, I love the guys. It's been really really fun, and that's Jeez. my my story of how I joined TS. That's, that's an awesome story. Uh, did you play in any bands before TSOL? Uh, yeah, just local bands back home in California. Um, uh, I started uh, playing in, uh, with bands like in 95, 1995. Uh, I started off with a band called the Jawas. The Jawas. 
Yeah, and then just local ba- uh, backdoor bands, uh, the Feds, uh, Urban Decay, um, uh, Scum, and then I started playing for uh, one of one of my favorite bands uh, right before TSO, uh, a band called Litmus Green. Oh yeah, um, I actually saw that in your bio. I was gonna bring that up too. Yeah, it's a great band. I, uh, if you guys haven't listened to it, listen to them. Uh, they're from Orange County too. Yeah, um, I heard of like. I heard a couple songs, a really hardcore band. Though. I liked it. Yeah, it's cool. So I, I started playing with them, and uh, uh, I was with them for maybe four years, and then we stopped playing. Um, and then um, right around the time when we stopped playing, uh, I joined uh, TSW. So just local band. This is this is my biggest gig. Right your um your story of your progression has really DIY compared to. Uh, tiny story because he had been in other you know he'd been in head pe and you know other bigger bands and he got into tsol you started you know with small bands and then they didn't know who you were you just applied like it was a job and you got accepted i, I really dig that and yeah I, and that's the thing that's, that's what i was saying is that usually when they get bands or or i mean new people are like in the band they someone they, they know or is a friend of a friend uh that's what like in the beginning uh uh you know, they give me a chance, you know, and I would never forget it, man. Like for them to give me a shot like that, and and then yeah. for it to work out, it's like a dream come true, man. And, and I really appreciate the guys for doing that. It speaks in volume about how Jack yeah. Run and Mike do things, because yeah, like most... well, yeah, it, it shows it shows how cool they are. You know, they're very to me, they're family, man. And uh, uh, for them to do something like that was was pretty badass, you know. <laughs> exactly. So, um, congratulations for being TSOL. Oh, um, thanks, dude. <laughs> I was going to say, though, my trigger complex story is a bit different. I mean, I'm 26, just to throw that out there. But, um, so obviously, Dance With Me is my favorite album by TSOL, and then probably Disappear, Divider We Stand, Beneath the Shadows, and then yeah, the trigger awesome. complex. This album took me, it's 2017 when it came out, it took me a long time. It, it had to grow on me because. It wasn't dance with me. It wasn't disappeared. It didn't have that you know hardcore punk tense to it, and yeah, it just it took a while. I mean, I love the album now. I I blast it all the time now. But when it first came out, I was like, oh, this is like the remember when I told you that um, beneath the shadows took a while to grow on me. I used to hate that album. It's just I it it took a while oh, to right. grow on me. Yeah, I love I love everything Jackson at this point. But yeah, the trigger complex took a uh, two years to grow on me, because um. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I I love all the albums, man. I mean, I, if you if you notice, uh, every single one of them is different, and 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 that's their goal. You know, they want to make it sound different. They don't want it to sound the same, and and I think that's cool, though. You know, I mean, I listen to bands that still play from and then they're from like the '80s and stuff, and their new albums still sound like the old stuff and you know in a way it's kind of cool but it's in the same time it's kind of like uh it's kind of like uh i want to hear something different you know the only two TS- everyone has, everyone has different opinions on that yeah the only two tsol albums i kind of i call part one or part two is dance with me and disappear and the reason i say that's because obviously dance with me came well first but first it was an ep then dance with me beneath the shadows with the statues and then you know joe what yeah but disappear. I mean, I'm 26. I was when TSL started. I didn't exist. And then you know when when I was one to seven, Joe Wood was in the band, and I didn't know TSL until 2004, five, something like that. I was like 10 yeah. years old. But legit, the sound like I I only imagine growing up in the 80s and knowing this band, hearing Dance with Me, then hearing Beneath the Shadows, and then Change Today, and all that. Then suddenly. 2001 disappear drops it has the jack grisham it has the hardcore sound to it that dance with me has and even the cover dance with me has got a little what is it a little zombie guy a little skeleton sitting standing on the side of it the art yeah. the artwork is rather rather relatively the same and it's got jack grisham just tsol's return that's what i like to call uh, disappear yeah yeah, that's, that's my second favorite album. I wish it was on vinyl. I don't know why they only yeah, put it on CD. Have they ever talked about releasing Disappear and Divided We Stand on vinyl or cassette at all? 
No, not that I know of, no. No, I think the only ones right now, the only ones that we have available that I know of um, is just Dance With Me and uh, Beneath the Shadows. And I haven't seen any Trigger Complex, but I know they've had it for for some time in the beginning. Uh, uh, hopefully we'll get more of those. Yeah, and I know just they uh, just reissued Beneath the Shadows, and I'm like, come on, Jack. <laughs> Do disappear and divide we stand already. <laughs> come on. Yeah, I, I wouldn't... Uh, yeah, I, I think maybe they, they might do that later on. I don't, I'm not sure. Yeah, I posted in the group about that, and I was like, who wants, who would like to see this on record or tape? And everybody's like, yes, do it, do it, do it. <laughs> yeah. There's well, yeah, we, sh we, they sh we should do that. I mean, it's, uh, the vinyls go pretty quick. Everyone seems to be started collecting them now, nowadays. What's your, um, uh, this is kind of a question that I don't normally ask, but what are your top ten favorite TSL songs to play? My top ten? Yeah, to, to play. That I like playing? Mm-hmm. Oh, fuck, let's see. <laughs> <laughs> I have so many of them. That's um, why I don't ask this question often, because it's not easy. Oh, man, there's a lot of them, man. I like playing all of them, to be honest with you. That's a pretty good like, My top favorite one? If you can't do a top ten list, maybe a top five list or a top three, if that's easier. Uh, let's see, let's see. I'm trying to think. I like I like playing uh, one of my top ones is Dance with Me of course. Dance with me. Um, uh, the song Satellites from uh, the Trigger Complex. Yes, I love that. I song. love that song. Um, and um, we played it a couple times, and and I I wish we could play it more. Uh, it would have to be um, um, Darker My Love. Yeah, that's what that's a song I don't hear come up too often. Nice. Yeah, that's a great song. I love that song. Um, but we played it a couple of times, and, and that's probably one of my favorite songs that I, that that I played with them. That I had a lot of fun playing. I mean, I, I fuck all of them, dude. I, I love all the songs, you know. I, there's not a song that comes up where I'm bummed out like, oh, this song, you know. Yeah, I give it to me. I like playing every, like every song. I, I throw all my energy in, and and you know, I have I like having fun playing them. I uh, I can drum a little bit. I, uh, I've played World War Three and the uh, superficial love before. I mean, I'm I'm nowhere near the level. I wouldn't get on a stage and try that, but yeah, I got the pattern down a little bit. I'm I uh, I tire easily, so I I couldn't really do the whole. Yeah, yeah that, that wouldn't work too. Well. I'd be like, Ben Ben would look at me. Are you already tired? Yeah, sorry guys, it's only been fifteen seconds. Yeah, I think one of my. One of my favorite ones that I, I really like to play too is "Die for Me." Die for me. Um, yeah, with Ron singing it. Um, it's just a. I get a lot. I, I don't know when, when I play that song. There's a lot of energy in it, um, and then I like to play. There's a part where I just start playing my eighth note on the ride, and it's not like nonstop. It's kind of like challenges me to like just keep going and going and not stopping, not stopping. So I, I like that song. Yeah, it's fucking. It's a badass song. Since you uh, did bring this up in chat, um, you guys said you said you guys did play Red Shadows recently live. Uh, yes, it was actually last year. Um, uh, we played it a, a few times. Um, it was uh, it was in our Australian and uh, Australian tour when we played it. Oh, Australian tour, nice. Yeah, we played it. Uh, just a, a couple times, I believe we played it. Uh, but with Ron singing, uh, yeah. Jack didn't sing him. Um, it was just Ron singing. Oh, um, but that's probably the only song that we played with uh, the Joe Whatera. Yeah, yeah, it's a really good song, and uh, I um, I actually just you know how I showed you that screenshot earlier. So I posted the review of Change today, and uh, he saw it and he reshared it, and um. Yeah, apparently that that made his day to hear that you guys played that or something. So yeah, you made you made Joe's day. Oh, well, that's cool. <laughs> well, yeah, because during my interview with him, I asked him if he because I didn't I didn't know. I'm like, have they played any of your songs? He's like, I think I saw them play Red Shadows, and to actually confirm it was pretty cool. But yeah, so yeah, uh, I think we played it once too, uh, uh, right before we left on tour to Australia. Which is the Alex's bar? Does anybody? Yeah, it was oh, sorry. Go ahead. Video's 
Yeah, I think you can find it on on, on YouTube probably. That's what it's at. That would be awesome because I, I I just uh, so you said Ron sings that live. Yes. Yeah, Ron sings that. Interesting. I'll uh, I'll have to check that out. Um, so. I know you just did the 40th uh, year, the 40th quarantine live stream. What was it like doing that? Cause I've, uh, that's actually the first quarantine live stream I've ever seen before. Yeah, that was actually the first one I've ever seen and, and done. You know, it was, it was pretty. It was actually pretty fun, man. Um, uh, you know, not playing for almost two months and seeing the guys again, it was pretty exciting. You know. Yeah, um, I, I could bet. Yeah, and I was a little rusty too because you know I haven't really been playing and and uh, you know playing again. I got my my fingers all shredded up and blistered and everything. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was it was really fun, man. The oh. guys that, that set it up, the camera crew, um, Big Daddy, uh, what's his name? Big Daddy. I don't know they call him Big Daddy. I'm not gonna call him Big Daddy though, because that sounds a little weird. Man. <laughs> yeah, but it was it, it was actually pretty cool. They they did a great job setting it up and everything. It was cool. Um, the only weird thing, of course, was not having a crowd. You know, I mean, because a lot of times. Oh, you didn't have a crowd. Oh no, it was no one in there, dude. It was just us and the camera crew. That's it. Oh, I thought it was like a small little venue with like maybe ten people, since that's how many people most businesses are allowed to have now. Wow, wow. With zero people. Wow. Yeah, that uh, is that, that. Damn, those people are pretty good at setting that shit up. I, I legit thought that was a small show. You had flashing lights and everything. Yeah, no, I, I mean it was a show, you know, but it wasn't a show where there were. Yeah, people yeah, were, I know what you mean. Allowed to go in and buy tickets, whatever. And, but it was fun though, you know, like just knowing that uh, people all over the world were watching you play live. I, I think it was really, really cool. Has a uh, when's your next um, non? quarantine show it going to be do you think oh fuck it's kind of <laughs> hard to say man i mean who knows dude um uh, if everything goes well i mean hopefully by the end of this year you know by the end of the uh, year <laughs> yeah i mean maybe uh, i say maybe october september october i uh, uh i think we we might have some shows in california that are booked uh, around that time, but I mean, I can't say. Yeah, yeah, it depends on what sure this pandemic old, does. Yeah, yeah. Does, you know, so hopefully it. that happens, man, right? because uh, I I really miss playing, and I we need to get back out and start playing again. I haven't seen TSO live, but I really want to. And I returned to the Philippines, which is where I'm married, around the end of the year. And if I could have literally one wish, it would be to see TSO live. That would if I. You've never seen TSO play live? Nope. I'm from I'm from a small town oh, in okay. Kansas, man. Yeah, you're missing out, dude. I I know, thank you. I know I'm missing out. The only bands yeah, I've seen live are No Effects, Bad Religion, Off, Dillinger Ford, Teenage Bottle Rocket, because they were playing with them. And I've, I've seen some local bands. Or no, I saw the Melvins at the Bottle Cap in Lawrence, Kansas. I saw Jelly Be Off from the Guantanamo School of Medicine live. Pretty much uh, Subhumans UK. Saw them in Kansas City, Missouri. Pretty much any band that comes through Kansas, which is not a lot when they live in Kansas City but I don't think TSO has come how have they came have we all came through Kansas in the last th few years uh, yes I think we were actually there last year oh I can't remember where but well, I, no, I, I, I believe we were last year I'm not sure through the majority of 2018 I lived in the Philippines so that's kind of why that year doesn't matter but no, I live in Illinois now, and uh, maybe the next well, maybe time we'll we go, there. <laughs> go to the Quad Cities, go to Davenport or Moline or even Chicago. I'll drive 200 miles to see you guys perform. Hell yes. <laughs> yeah, that'll be rad, dude. That'll be cool. Hell yeah. I'm, uh, another question here. I know I asked this earlier, but so are there any plans for another a new falling TSOL album? Another album? Uh, as for right now, um, not that I know of, you know. Um, I have there's no word for anything like that, but I do, I do know we have uh, a couple of singles probably coming out, or we still have some new songs that are not released that are that have been recorded. That so, makes me uh, happy. Yeah, so it's up to Jack what he wants to do with them. You know, uh, maybe save them or or release them later on. I, I'm not sure, but uh, I know that we are still recording and and um, 
writing music. What what makes me happy is to hear that TSOL is still playing music because um for a while they just weren't really as a, I like I said I found out about TSOL in two thousand and four ish. I don't remember, it's been a while. <laughs> but the it kinda worried me between two thousand and four and Life of Liberty and the pursuit of free downloads because after that picture disc came out, like almost ten years went by without a studio album and I was like, Jack, please don't quit <laughs> I, was, I, I love TSL. No, dude, uh, these guys, these guys, yeah, these guys still want to jump out. So that's a good thing, you know. They're not. These are probably one of the only uh, old school bands that still plays with uh, uh, all original members, but me that are still recording songs, new songs, and writing. Yeah, songs. that's uh, that's that's a fact right there. There's there's not many. I mean, I haven't. I'm still in the kind of beginning ranks of of a. Uh, interviewing musicians from the punk rock scene from the 80s, but I've done enough research to say that TSOL is one of the few left of the 80s and technically 78 scene that are still mostly together from how they started and are still kicking ass to this day and still raising the roof up there, which I'm, that makes me so happy to see that. Hello? Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. That's, uh, yeah it's pretty bad ass, yeah. But anyway, so I'm, uh, I think I've uh, asked you all, well, I guess this is this your question. What's it, uh, what's it like to go on a uh, tour with TSOL? Go on tour with, it's a lot of fun, dude. Um, Any crazy stories? Uh, nothing crazy. I mean, it's a lot of fun. I mean, we do a lot of cool things besides uh, showing up to, to the shows and playing for the fans and stuff. But uh, we, we do, you know, when we have our days off, we, we try to do, like, uh, some activities, you know. Um, we go sightseeing or check out, try to see museums or we even attempted to go fishing one time. Uh, <laughs> Hell yeah. So we, we try to go to the hot springs if there's any nearby or, you know, we do, it's, it's, it's badass because so it's, it's like a little vacation, but at the same time, we, we're playing music, you know? And that, it, So it, it's a lot of fun here. Hell and then yeah. we get to meet, uh, get to meet a lot of new people and hear their stories, a lot of, uh, a lot of the fans that, that I meet are, are a lot older, you know, they were around when PSOL first started off and, you know, they tell me their stories and I like hearing their stories, it's pretty, pretty badass, you know, that's, I mean, it's the stories of how punk rock started off and it's, it's pretty cool knowing the history of it. And, uh, I, I've, I've seen your, your pictures on the, on the, of you playing drums and all that. Just, I asked this question to drummers that I interview. What is your cuisine? What is your diet to help you stay so fit for the for the like lengthy tours and all that? How do you adjust your diet so that you don't you know get food poisoning or this and that? Like, what's your cuisine like? Uh, fuck! You eat a lot of tacos, man. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of tacos and <laughs> nah, dude. Uh, uh, well, I mean, fuck. <laughs> I don't know, dude. <laughs> I know that's uh, well, what actually, I, you know, uh, I don't know if it has anything, anything to do with it, but I was actually in the military for a while, and maybe that. Oh wow! Uh, that maybe that's uh, what keeps me keeps me fit. You know, my my past. Um, no, I I, I, go, I go walking once in a while. I gotta stay in shape. You know, I can't I can't um, you know get out of shape because then I'll be up there uh, trying to catch my breath the whole time. And, where did um, you uh, serve at, if you don't mind me asking? I was I was in the army. Oh what? I was in the army. Oh the army? Yeah. Uh, did you? Where were you stationed at? I was stationed in Germany for six years. Oh nice, cool. Yeah, I always like to. But uh, thank you for your service, by the way. Oh thanks, sir. thanks. Yeah, you know, there's a lot of different things that I do to try to stay in shape to. Uh, they fit so I so that way I can keep up with playing and stuff like that, you know. Hell yeah. Not, um, with the things that you eat and you know, you gotta be active. You can't just be sitting around. Well, that's what I like to hear. Yeah, that's how I ask. Yeah. Uh, I ask musicians that question all the time. <laughs> just because. Yeah. Some musicians have a really like I've heard. Uh, Greg Hudson, he's got a very unique diet. Um. Keith Morris, he's got a unique diet. Some people just have a very unique diet, and it's just interesting to hear, like, what people snack on on the tour bus, or, like, what type of, maybe, 
weird cocktail con- conductors they make or something like that. It's just you know. Yeah, on tour actually, when I'm, when we're on tour, I don't I don't need any sweets or or snacks or anything like that. Uh, so maybe that's why. Um, <laughs> I eat more than maybe that helps me out. I don't know, but uh, yeah, dude. I mean, I mean, everyone has uh, different bodies. You know, everyone has different things that 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 they need to help themselves out. And uh, I got mine, and uh, those are mine, I guess. Hell yeah. Well, uh, is there anything else you wanted to add to this? Uh, yeah, dude. Uh, I just want to let you know that you, you're missing out. You need to come see us play, dude. <laughs> so anyone, that, anyone out there that hasn't seen TSO play, I guarantee you that if you come see TSO play, it'll be the best fucking punk rock show you've ever gone to. Yes, it will be. And I need that's my that's my bucket list. Okay, that's the right, that's the wrong word. That's my dream before I leave this country. I don't fully die no time soon. I don't want to die. Oh, for, yeah. Die for TSOL, maybe not right now, but in the future, who knows? <laughs> that was dark. Yeah, no, dude, we'll be out for 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 some time, dude, and, and hopefully we start playing again and start touring and we start traveling everywhere so everyone can see TSOL play. And Hell yeah, looking man. forward to one again. Well, uh, uh, thank you so much for your time on this. I really appreciate it. Yeah, no problem, dude. Thanks for, uh, for following me. Alright, so have a lovely night. You too, dude. Yeah, you Bye. Too.